Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to be talking about a research article which is going to be linked in the description below. And the uh, article is on mutual vehicle to home and vehicle to grid operation considering solar load uncertainty. Now, what we're going to find out is how people are getting motivated to use a solar technology, solar load technology in their housing facilities, and how this minute step can really change a bring a drastic change in the economic lifestyle of the user. So basically the first thing I want to talk about is the motivation of V2G and V2H. And um, basically the electric vehicles uh, can be connected to both the building and the grid at the same time. So here the ideology that we are talking about is you and your house being connected to the grid system. And from the grid system you have installed a solar panels on top of your roof and what's going to happen is that as you take the electricity from the grid the solar builds up the electricity and provides it to the car if needed or back to the grid if it's excess now we see some benefits in performing this kind of operation and this is what's going to be our motivation to find out how and how drastic this change can benefit the users who have this operational system installed in their homes. So in the building, the vehicle to home, V2H, which is referred as operation is modeled. And in the grid, the V2G is studied. So what is the V2H and V2G operation? The V2G operation permits the EV to send energy to the electric network and receive power from the grid whenever necessary. The V2G may be used to shave the peak demand or to reduce the energy cost. Now to put this into simpler words, when we have a specific festival time that requires a high peak demand of electricity, it could be a football game or it could be a cricket match or it could be anything that uh, during that particular time of the period if you use electricity the energy cost is going to be significantly be higher than the rest of the day now this will shave off that uh, extra cost that uh, if you didn't have the system involved you would have to pay that peak demand price now how does it function though the v2h the vehicle to home provides a paradigm for operations of ev in this mode, a car is linked to the building and it can send energy to the building or receive energy from the building at a time interval when necessary. Such operation may shift the demand from expensive to non-expensive time intervals resulting in reduced amount of energy cost. Alright, so here we plug in our car inside our homes. And when we do that, either the car who is uh, supposedly be a fully charged car or even a 20% charged, it can provide the energy back to the solar grid. And the solar grid having that excess power can provide that energy build it up over the time span back to the grid. So essentially, whatever amount of energy that you will be using inside your homes, will be significantly be shaved off by the amount of energy you provide back to the grid. So this is the whole concept in saving amount of money uh, even though you're using uh, amount of energy and it can be an incremental usage of energy. So I'll show you and talk about this in much broad manner. But uh, the EVs on both uh, vehicle to home and vehicle to grid operations are together. So basically here we have assumed that the home is equipped with the EV, the electric vehicle. And that home itself has solar panels and electric roads uh, that are also modeled in the building. So the optimal operation pattern of EVs is denoted. So this is what we have assumed and uh, proposed in order for this concept to work. So the proposed paradigm is that you have a particular EV and this is, let's say it could be a car which has a good capacity, good megawatts, okay? 
and what's going to happen is that when you drive this car back home you plug this home you plug this car back into your homes and since your home is connected to the grid here the either the car is going to be charging okay either you your house is going to supply the charge to the vehicle or your vehicle if it's fully charged is going to provide energy back to your house and what's going to happen is that say for thursday if today is thursday on thursday what you did is use 500 kilowatts in a day it's a lot but say assume you used 500 kilowatts in a day having used 500 kilowatts what you're going to do is um, let's say you plug the car back into the house and the car has fully charged let's say of 200 kilowatts okay now since your car is 200 kilowatts charged and you have used 500 and also the solar panels on top of your roof are going to be generating the energy over the period of the day say it increased 250 kilowatt okay so in total you even though you have used 500 and you're supposed to pay at the rate of say 18 cents per kilowatt now what you're gonna do is you're gonna since you're giving 450 kilowatts back to the grid you're only paying for 50 remaining kilowatts and this is the concept so even though essentially you're using 500 kilowatts you're actually paying only for 50 kilowatts and this is the whole concept and this is our proposed paradigm on it now let's talk about some numerical values to understand this whole operation in a much uh, elusive manner now say this is the beginning of the day and the one hour is represented by hour one hour two hour three and so on and so forth since we have 24 hours in the day we have 24 listed col uh, um, tables over here and in the each column what's going to happen is you have a load power that's being used per hour and the solar power which is in kilowatts per hour and what's going to happen is it's going to list down the amount of hour it takes to generate a particular energy kilowatt hour uh, per hour so the first hour your solar panel is not conducting any energy obviously we have the sun rises at seven o'clock approximately and that's when the sunlight hits the solar panel so this is the reason why we have zeros over here and it's not particular big deal but since after seven what's going to happen is the sun stays till 19 of and then again we drop back to our zero zero what's really happening and how you're profiting is between the seven and 19 hours so what's happening is that your solar panel is generating the amount of energy and the whole energy that you have been using throughout the 24 hour span and you're paying this much this is the peak uh, energy cost at the time of the day and as you can see when it's the morning time when it's the rush hour at about 8 it starts to increase from 10 cents per kilowatt hour to 16 cents per kilowatt hour and it remains that way and perhaps it even remains that way until 3 p.m. and after 3 p.m. since 16 which is 4 p.m. it changes to 26 because many people come back from work and the energy cost has been significantly increased now there is a decremental here at 22 which is about 10 o'clock and after that it's a night time and again the energy costs are back to what it was in the beginning all right so you now understand how the energy costs and how much you're paying works so basically if you were to add all this load power together of how much consumption you have done or you as in the user have done in their house and subtracted by the solar panel about how much kilowatt hour it has been generated throughout the pe period of the day what's going to happen is you take your load power lp and subtract it by the solar power sp and whatever is generated say x is generated so x is in kilowatt hour about 
how much net uh, power net energy that is being used and you pay according to that so n net amount of energy of x net x multiplied by the energy electricity pies which is the dollar per kilowatt hour so what's going to happen is if you don't have this solar panel installed you're going to be paying a lot more than you would if you had it installed now if you want to see how much of profit we can do this is another table that shows exactly just that so this is the daily operational cost for v2h and v2g so operational with both v2h and v2g assuming that you have all of these components together you'd be spending about 18.78 dollars a day for your energy bills and if you were to assume that you have V2G without the vehicle to house operation, you'll be spending about 29.58 bucks per day. And if you have V2H, which is vehicle to house operation, but you do not have vehicle to grid, then you would be paying a little less than vehicle to what was before, which is about 21.05 dollars. Now let's talk about conclusion. We have understood. Uh, how much money we'll be saving and approx you can see that we'll be saving about 57 to 12 percent uh, depending on the user whether it's uh, v2h or v2g is installed in the user's house or not and the way coal charge energy when it's not expensive it's sent to home and when it's expensive it's sent back to the uh, grid and such operational pattern minimizes the daily energy cost which is our objective of the user and when the vehicle arrives home with even assuming 20 percent of energy inside their batteries and leave the home at fully charged batteries the traded energy the energy between v2h and v2g is known as the traded energy so this traded energy between the building and the grid demonstrates that building sells its excess of energy to the grid i hope you like this video and explanation to this uh, concept and i hope i did some justice to this uh, article thanks for watching and subscribe if you haven't already